Okay, last time we checked out uh, the bosses of Riot Games MMO from Necrit as well, and this time we we will we will be reacting to the legendary loot of Riot's MMO according to lore. Here we go. MMO videos. Riot MMO. Riot MMO. Riot MMO videos. Multiplayer Riot MMO. Riot MMO. Riot MMO. 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 Loot, arguably one of the driving forces of MMOs, and it doesn't matter if it is an MMORPG or an MMO shooter. Loot is something everyone celebrates their joy over, but it might be for two separate reasons. Some people like having big numbers on their characters. Sure, it is a key progression for MMOs, but for a lot of others, me strongly included, it's all about the visuals. I simply want to show off the achievements of my character, so after I get some good loot, it better look good. In fact, that's exactly what my MMO journeys have been about. I care about the appearance of my character a lot, Classic Wrath being a perfect example. You see, since the original Burning Crusade, I have this always played a Paladin. So naturally, with uh. Classic, I got one to max level on my home EU server. But Blizzard also brought up the fresh servers, where everyone would start as level 1 and everyone would be on a leveled playing field as the next expansion comes out. This is something a lot of people didn't believe would be that popular. <laughs> Until it was so popular it was burning Blizzard spaghetti servers. See, people thought Blizzard was only releasing awful games these days, but not only did I mean, yes, and also, I don't know what it is, but every game's servers nowadays are fucking dog shit. I don't know what's going on, but they need to step it up. They release one amazing queue simulator, but they release two. Yeah, well, I true, quickly realized true. there was no way I was gonna play on a fresh server. Right? Well, it turns out prime time for EU is when US is asleep. So I bypassed the queues by making a character on the US servers and my leveling Smart. was a breeze. And here's the reason why I'm even telling you about this. When I was deciding which class I wanted to play, I thought about which class would be played the least so that my loot would not be contested. Well, in Wrath, that would be- I will say this. I didn't play Wrath and I probably will never play Classic WoW. But for 2004, WoW was so much better than anything we've ever had ever since. It's not even close. For its time, right? It's not even comparable. Okay. Be the shaman. But if I wanted to play a shaman as the alliance, I would have to play as the Draenei. This <laughs> Visuals yeah. matter to me, I can't play a character that looks awkward. But thankfully, in Riot's universe, the armor and weapons are badass. We already had a look at the world of Runeterra, we also talked about all the existing races in this universe. I showed you the greatest villains and bosses we will you inevitably get one? to see. And now it's time to show you the final piece. The epic loot revealed by the lore of this universe. Wait, this and is the oh final boy. video he's gonna do? What am I gonna what am I gonna watch for content now? What? Be ready for some glorious items. This video will be split into two halves. The first half of the video will talk about all the armories of all the different regions. And I'll show you what their typical armor looks like. <laughs> With the second half of the video being the juicy one. Because wow. I'll show you some legendary weapons from this universe. But I will also show you some real 3D models of the weapons which I pulled from the Ruined King game. So we'll be able to have a look at some real models that tease what we could see in the MMO. But first, let's go region by region and let's have a look at the typical armories. So, let's start with the good, totally not racist boys of Demacia. With Demacia having the classic white like castles that. and knights in shiny armor, like that's exactly what we should expect here. Besides the rugged appearance at low levels, which we should expect everywhere, the armor of the Dauntless Vanguard is just about the most iconic here. Being made of petricide steel, it is naturally pale and resilient to magic. At the lower ranks, it is a wall of silver steel. 
but at higher ranks, their armor has some golden outline. I actually like the their sergeants RT also have different more. helmets that stand out. And depending on what your job in the military is, the armor has totally different variants. There is one for the horse riders, there is also a lighter version for the trekkers, there is also a version for the raptor riders, this one also That's has cool. a cool elite variant, and you can see it in greater detail in the official concept art. Like so those. if you're a lover of shiny armor, you're going to appreciate these. Even their cloth armor is just a lighter version of plate, that shows you how much Demacians love armor. I mean, they even armor up their hawks. Looks but cool. Demacia also has the classic scouts hiding in bushes, so they also have the classic ranger outfit. Leather armor. They also have the swift-footed duelists with light armor. And of course, then we have the mage seekers. As we mentioned in the last video, like these those. are the guys hunting down mages. The most iconic part of their gear are the half masks. That's what indicates that you belong uh, into their crappy okay, boat. The half masks. But all of them also wear long blue coats and a trinket called the Grey Mark. This piece of petricide stone absorbs too magic, soft, which armor. comes in handy whenever you are trying to uncover a hidden mage. While some mage seekers have fancier masks than others, I remember that we I was... really should mention the shittiest person in all of Demacia, the leader of the mage seekers, Lord Eldred, who not only um. has the fanciest mask of them all, but he feels so insecure about himself that he carries two Grey Marks. But the mage seekers are not the only ones with unique Oh, that's on his armor. Near the mountains where we can find oh. dragons. The local Demacian armor is resilient not only to magic, but also fire. That's why that cool their too. variant of the armor is red. But I'll be and real. it is simply called the Dragon Guard armor. But all of these just lead us to the armor of the highest... If there's dwarves, there's no dwarves in this game, I think. But I would play a dwarf. ...value in all of Demacia. The armor of the royal court, and currently we know about its three iterations. This armor is fully golden, unlike the typical silver Demacian variants. One type of this armor is worn by Barret Bevel, one of the greatest Demacians who ever lived. I don't want to play a His Yorgo. story is awesome, but unfortunately it's not really important for this video. What is important is that Barret was the greatest Demacian. He died during the battle at the Gates of Mourning while protecting his nation. As a result, during his burial ceremony, his armor was reforged into a container for his ashes. So the golden ah. armor was turned into this. Um, I I don't think we're gonna wear that in the MMO. The second variant of the golden I mean, royal if you armor die, baby. is worn by Jarvan IV. <laughs> this combat armor is passed between the leaders of Demacia. Here you can even see it being worn by his own father. And you can see that it was for that looks painfully uh, obstructing when you're trying to fight. Forged in the image of the dragons that once threatened the lands of Demacia. I highly doubt it would be everything. lootable because Jarvan is not an evil man and he is actively wearing it. But I still wanted to mention it because it looks cool and it could definitely inspire another Demacian set. And then there is the third variation. The armor of his now dead father... King Jarvan III. This oh. is probably the heaviest armor in all of Demacia. I really love I mean, this image because here chunky. Jarvan looks like a space marine from Warhammer. Really? But at least it shows you that Demacia is not only all about silver. They also have gold. Fun fact, the Crown Guard family is wearing a special variation of the armor which has comically large shoulder pads. Yeah. Garen is part of this family, that's why he looks the way he does. When it comes to the weapons, there is not much to add here. The Marcian weapons I, I are minimalistic and shiny. So let's move on to Noxus. Noxus has the exact opposite of the Marcia. instead of bright and shiny, they are dark and bloody. If you like big like plated that armor that is not shiny, you're gonna like these guys quite a bit more. Here the vast majority of the that armor cool comes from fuck. the Trifarian Legion. It is dark with a lot of hard edges and occasional silver lining. You can also notice that oftentimes this armor does not have sleeves. Because Noxians are overly aggressive and they don't want to limit their offense. But not all of them. For example, Captain Farron has a type of armor that doesn't give a damn about anyone. 
And yes, without spoiling anything, during Arcane, if you look into the background, you may find even more Noxian armor. Oh. But then there is also this interesting variant that is fully plated with a winged helm. That's this looks one cool looks as different fuck, because it is actually an ancient Noxian who was. You see, guys, no bikini skins. This is way fucking cooler than any of what Lost Ark has. I mean, some Lost Ark skins are okay, but like, you know. Brought back using blood magic. So perhaps we will be able to get something like this in the tombs beneath Noxus. Now, when it comes to light armor and cloth, Noxian spies often use leather with occasional plate armor. This is also used on the battlefields by those who are confident they don't need to use heavy plating to protect themselves. But really, it is the casters who are going to get the most style out of Noxus. The Noxian cult of Hemomancers use the black jacket with the crimson cloaks that look amazing. The black rose may I mean... swap the jackets for more plating because, well, it's Noxus. With the Noxian officials sometimes ditching the crimson cloak badass. entirely for a full black imperial look. So even as a caster, even if you are not going to be wearing plated armor, you are still going to appreciate Noxus. When it comes to their weapons, well, Noxus does have massive weapons of dark steel, which often match the Noxian architecture with the hard edges. But Noxians also have a special kind of a weapon, the runed weapons. Noxian uh -huh. rune weavers are able to weave runes into their blades to enhance them. Sometimes these runes make the blades lighter, so that you can one hand uh. a blade that is bigger than yourselves. And other times the runes simply make the weapons indestructible. So just know that Leek does have yeah, a canonical reason one. for you to be wielding oversized weapons. Noxians also have suicidal bombs. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna lead into fun gameplay. Uh, so now let's move into the Freljord. Here we all know what to expect. Either you are wearing a lot of fur or you wear nothing. This entire region is pretty much made of leather armor. But at least it comes in different styles. The Avarosans turn it into blue cloaks with white fox fur Looks elements. Cool too. The Winter's Claws stay closer to the brown elements. But at least the shamans of the Freljord like give it a twist. They theme their armor after animals. That looks cool be it as shit. A mammoth with I massive to be a tusks on his shoulders, a wolf with the amazing wolf shoulder pads, or even an elk wearing their bones. I'm making with a, that I'm said, a some individuals, usually those of a higher rank, wear actual metal armor. But because it's difficult to harvest metal in all the frozen landscape, and because metal tends to be freezing cold in this climate, it is rare to see people wearing it. However, up in deep north, Lysandra's army of the Draglorn are clad in metal plates. Just like that Lysandra, so they are cool. wearing Look helmets that shaped in the image of the Watchers, but, uh, which they are holding back. It just looks epic, even they you know? are not going to be the most iconic armor of the High Freljord. Fantasy. I can almost guarantee you that Riot's Born. MMO will have a set themed after the Hearthblood. The Hearthblood are the people who worship the demigod Orn, mm. with Orn being a godly blacksmith. This demigod is the one who crafted the massive vault door which Brom is using as his shield. And all you need to do is to peek into Orn's forge to get an idea of what I like, the armor I like all is of this going so to look like. A lot of ram thematics with aspects of a volcano. In fact, in the Ruined King game, you can find what a hypothetical shield made by Orn would look like. Orn is simply far too iconic for this region, so expect at least one Fire Ram based set. But here I also very quickly want to add one more thing. Even though these people are rarely talked about, the Freljord also has its own scavengers. And it's a shame look that these how fucking are rarely mentioned. Can, we, can more games look like this, dude? Wait, like, imagine you... I want to just have armor that feels like it fits, dude. And if it fits, then it's badass automatically. Because their armor looks insane. And when it comes to the weapons, Freljordians have very barbaric tools. Loads of axes, swords and wooden shields. With an occasional primitive weapon from one of the trolls. Nothing too out of the ordinary. However, the Freljord is also known for the true ice weapons. 
We talked about these in the past. These weapons are made out of magical ice that literally kills you if you touch it. That is, unless you are an iceborn, in which case it will still hurt you a lot. But what if, what if, yeah, what if, what if just the blade is the iceborn? Ice, the true ice, right? And the arrest isn't. Does it still hurt you? And these true ice weapons can have all sorts of shapes and sizes. From swords and axes to bows and flails. But that's it for the Freljord, so now let's have a look at Ionia. Ionia has a lot of clean design. Most people are wearing simple robes. And depending on what class you are playing, the robes can vary heavily. The blade dancers following Irelia wear blade slightly reinforced robes. They also wear these reinforced hats, which can be used as shields when banding together. Yes, this is not an insect, these are blade dancers. The oh. field musicians also wear some <clears throat> really cool caster armor. But this is definitely not gonna be the coolest light armor here, because that one is gonna go to the Kashuri armory. Here, the one simply known as the Maker, is making legendary weapons and equipment. Uh -huh. Which certainly does have a unique style. And yes, the very popular League of Legends champion Jin is also wearing a set made by the Maker. Uh -huh. Then of course, we can't forget about the Blade Masters. The Blade Masters of Ionia are known for their very wonky shoulder pads. You can see one on Yasuo, you can see two of them on his brother Yone, and even Master Yi in his fully golden armor couldn't afford to not have at least slightly wonky shoulder pad. Speaking of I which, mean... all the Vuju Blade Masters wear helmets with the green lenses. These allow them to see what is happening in the spirit realm, so I wouldn't be surprised ah. if one of these weird helmets was obtainable in the game. Again, it is quite iconic. That but makes don't sense. worry, we can find some <laughs> heavy armor even here. While normally the Ionian ninjas are wearing light armor, Shen and Zed are two types of fully armored ninjas. With Shen wearing the classic Kinku blue colors, and Zed wearing the red colors of the Shadow Order. But even that is not it. We also can't forget about the Temple Guards which might be wearing I, the I most badass armor bad in Ionia. And when it comes to the weapons of Ionia, it is all blades and sharp objects that resemble living that, things. I, that design here is so sick. Like with this wolf thing, just like prowling about, dude. And this guy, bald, that's pretty based. Weapon, cool. I don't know, this, this, is, this is my favorite design so far, I think. Next up, let's delve into Piltover and Zone. This will be a quick one because we can't get closer to just real life. Anything from the 20s to 60s is in fashion here. At least when it comes to the light armor. But even that has a cool twist here. Because Piltover and Zone are based on technology, we don't sometimes... We don't know if it's top down or not. I really hope it's not top down. I really hope it's not you can find some really great examples of proper tech wear. With the Pharaohs family being the best example. Here they are wearing a straight up Tesla suit. And here one of the leaders of the Pharaohs family has a very good armor set. Where you can see all the hard labor on their shoulder pads. I mean, this is definitely one, is one of the more unique the armor one. sets of Piltover. It's probably and the of worst course one in Zone so all of this gear is gonna be slightly more grungy. Or at times horrifying, but the fun will probably begin when we start looking into the augments. Because augments are not only for the fanatics, they can also be worn fashionably. And I can't wait to see all the different augmented armor sets. When it comes to the heavy armor, don't look into the forges, I'll tell you that much, but really all the heavy armor goes to the wardens, the uh -huh. heavily armored police force of the city. However, some of the barons of Zone may be teasing some heavy armor as well. When it comes mm. to the weapons of Piltover and Zone, well, it's anything that can be engineered. So probably primitive guns, explosives and hidden knives. From here we're going to Shurima. Not a Shurima is going to be though. very simple too. Either you are from the desert, or you're from the capital, or you are from Ikathia. In the desert you can find a lot of primitive technology, so don't expect much there. 
Although some of the raiders Ooh. gear can be appealing at times, but That's from cool. the civilized areas. The chronomancers show us a good bit of what caster armor from Shurima could look like. We can also find more caster's armor on Zerath's acolytes, but even more in the capital city itself. In fact, I can show you quite a few good examples. Shurima really likes to wear cloth after all. Those some rogues there. may prefer some of these leather sets. But when it comes to something heavier, Shurima's golden army comes to the rescue. They are big fans of gleaming golden armor. Though they are not as heavily armored as someone like Demacia. Mm. We could also mention that even though Ikathia was utterly destroyed by the void, their kingdom used to have soldiers that look like this. So should we ever delve into some of the tombs in Shurima, maybe we... I mean, I think this isn't too far-fetched either. I think, I think there's a good chance that all of this will probably eventually find its way into the game. I mean, it would be dumb not to. Like, they don't, they don't have a lot of design work to do, at least not uh, inspiration-wise. Like, they have everything already, right? They just have to implement it into a new environment, into a new product. We can find something like this. And yes, this is also the type of armor that Jax is wearing. Yeah. Now, when it comes to their weapons, it is golden spears all around, with an occasional scimitar. However, some people are using the void as a weapon against itself. So mm. that's where we get these. Oh shit. I wouldn't be surprised if Riot really gave us one of these weapons, but it would have to be Endgame. I really love the concept of this kind of a weapon and, let's be honest, a full set of Void Corrupted weapons sounds like really great raid loot. Next, let's very quickly mention Targon. Most Targonians don't wear much. But when they decide to wear something, it is usually in the image of their religion. The Solari are clad in more of a golden armor, since it is themed after the sun. They are also very defensive people, so they also use giant shields. With the most yep. iconic soldier of them all, probably being Leona, but I prefer the Daylight Spear, Ravoon. And obviously, just like their armor, their weapons are also themed after the sun. In mm. fact, you can see the weapons being forged here by the Sunforger. The Lunari, on the other hand, like wear those. more of a lighter armor. Here we can get good examples of Caster's gear. And here you can see something more of a rogue set. With Diana herself wearing yeah, just Diana's about the heaviest really cool. armor the Lunari can offer. Makes sense it's not much, with the half moon and everything. When it comes to their weapons, it is curved blades. Because you know, they resemble the moon. True. And in some rare cases, the Lunari can also summon celestial weapons from the cosmic realms. Wait, so when it comes to the end Lunari as well? I had no idea. Game, I wouldn't be surprised if the Celestials gave us one of these weapons. Yes, these are actual canon celestial weapons. And they are all guns. But besides these, if you'd like to see some more iconic sets, we have the warriors of Rakor who resemble the classic Spartans. Mm. The herald of the dragons is wearing a very interesting mask. The goat people have their own gear. But most importantly, is, we better oh. get an armor set themed after the celestial aspects. That, that these one is, creatures are just I mean, so dang cool. Next up, we should also mention Bilgewater. For the most part, it is just pirates guns, cutlasses, corsair clothing, but besides the normal pirate wear, we can also mention the religious Buru worshipping the god of motion Nagake Boros. Their entire aesthetics are themed on uh, Aztec stone. At least that's what it comes to the not heavier my style. armor. Not my style. If you'd like to see some caster's armor, be ready for tentacles. Loads and loads of tentacles. But I'll tell you one thing, I really want to see an armor set themed after Nautilus. Ooh. Can you tell I like plate armor? Anyway, too, let's finish man. this first half of the video with the last place. The Shadow Isles. Obviously, before the Shadow Isles were the Shadow Isles, they were the Blessed Isles. That's where most of the design will come from. Of course, we know that the Sentinels originated on the Blessed Isles. So all of these light I also sets like these come designs. from here. Also, before we get into the darker stuff, I can show you all of these guys who show us some uncorrupted light sets. But then things Good, get dark. That's better. This place has a lot of interesting light armor, with my favorite being the set of the Rekindler. There is something so simple and yet so cool about that's this cool. one. 
I also really want to see a set themed after one of the spirits of death. Kindred is probably the best design in entire League of Legends. I hate how she plays or it, I don't know, in League, but it's uh, probably the this coolest one. This would be a one. great one for casters. But then of course, there were a lot of people who came here to vanquish the dead. And eventually they would the wolf, be claimed yeah. by the undeath as well, and that's where we can get these cool sets from. But also, the Shadow Isles are riddled by the soldiers of Kamavor, who once raided this place. Some of them were armor-themed after badass. the dragons of Kamavor. But others come from the Iron Order, wearing dark skeletal sets. But that's really it when it comes to the kinds of armors that come from this universe. Mm. Of course, I could keep going, but there is only so much time we have for a video. So now, let's get into the far more interesting part. And let's talk about some very specific items which we will see in Riot's MMO. Whether we'll be able to loot them or not is a whole separate conundrum. Uh, For example, in the past, Blizzard yeah. knew that Frostmourne was so legendary they couldn't just give it to players and... I think they could've. I think with these kind of hyper-legendaries, only one person per server should have it. Only one person. And you can only have one. Yeah. Let them run around. I don't know with if there will be servers. Not though. when the lore dictated that there could only ever be one Lich King. So when the players finally defeated the Lich King, on the Blizzard fact that it didn't... used to be cursed swords and lineage that could drop from anywhere in the world with a really low drop chance, and those swords would basically transform your character into like a mini raid boss, and uh, the more people you killed, the more damage you did. And only one of those blades per server was available. There were two blades. So, yeah. And when you died, you would drop it and it would go back into the loot table of the world. And then, you know, someone could drop it again. There's some cool shit in some games. And give them Frostmourne. But they gave them a weaker version of it called Shadowmourne. But then 10 years later, everyone was able to run around with the shards of the Frostmourn, so I don't know what the logic was. Never. Anyway, the point is, I am going to show you items that canonically exist in this universe. There are no buts or ifs, these legendary bots. items no more exist bots. in the game. And to make things even more in- The chance to drop the, to the person who killed you, drop to the, uh, to the world table. Um, and that maybe too. In ESO, there's a PvP hammer that you can use only one per Cyrodiil, and when you die, it drops. Mm. I've never played Lineage to it, I just know about those weapons. <laughs> but there's a lot of cool ideas how to make weapons truly legendary, and not make it so everyone gets them, you know? Interesting. First, I'll cover all the legendary items which we are unlikely to get, though Riot may still give them to us for the sake of it being cool and then we'll get into some proper loot. So first, let's mention Dragebane. This legendary weapon of the Demacian Kings Darwin. was designed to slay drakes. It is a hybrid between a spear and a sword that can extend itself. The mm. art of fighting with it is only really known to the Lightshield dynasty. And when wielded in combat, the weapon is just as dangerous to its wielder as it is to the enemy. And Jarvan only ever pulls it out when things really get serious. Mm. I doubt we will ever be able to get this legendary spear, but we are most likely going to see it in action in the MMO. Also in the category of legendary, likely unobtainable weapons, we have the legendary gloves of Nezook. Oh. Long story short, very long time ago there used to be an ascended warrior who was trying to figure out how to defeat the void monsters. His mm. name was Horok. Over Horok. time he figured out that he can use the Void against itself, and so he infused his glove with Voidy energy. This created a weapon known as the Netherblade of Horok, a magical blade that was mounted to his wrist, which could cut through just about anything. Years later Horok died, and many centuries after that, his tomb was looted by the champion known as Kasadin. As oh. you can see, this is what the Netherblade looks like. Oh. However, many years before Kasadin picked up the Netherblade of Horok, there was another ascendant called Nezuk who raided the tomb as well and he stole the other glove. 
Eventually Nezuk died too and Nezuk's tomb was raided by Ezreal. So Ezreal and Kassadin are each wielding a glove. I had no idea. Yeah, I always find this super interesting how how all of these champions were created a long time ago just for a MOBA and then they add lore on top of it so it makes sense again, you know? I think that's super interesting. Which make a complete set and together they are wielding power which even they probably don't comprehend. But because both of these champions are good guys, I doubt we are going to be able to steal also their truces, gloves. yeah. And this is where we can also mention the Hammer of Orlon. This one is very crucial for the story arc of Poppy. Poppy is on a quest to find the rightful owner of the Hammer of Orlon. Someone who could fully unlock the Hammer's potential, without knowing the fact that she herself is the rightful owner of the Hammer. And uh. that what she can do with the Hammer is not normal at all. So the moment you take the hammer away from her, you destroy a beloved character. That's why I don't believe we will be able to get the hammer of Orlon. Lastly, we could also mention the weapons of the aspects, like the Zenith Blade. It's simple, I don't believe Riot is going to allow us to fight a decently friendly fan-favorite champion such as Leo. Why not? So we are likely not getting that blade. I could keep going, nearly half of the champions in League of Legends are holding interesting weapons. But half of them are the good guys, so I doubt we would just randomly be able to take their things. Why not? So, Steal let's it. instead have a look at the bad guys and their loot. Now we are going to have a look at the items which will likely appear in the MMO. And for which it is only up to Riot whether they decide to let us obtain these items. <laughs> Here, above all, we have the legendary sword and shield of Commander Ledros. Ledros ah. played a big role in the story Wasn't of the he Ruined in King, Here's but of the Storm? not big enough to prevent us from looting his weapons. Was it? So I uh. truly would not be surprised if we were able to no, get no, no, that was the Leoric or something. That's completely different. Especially no, since Ledros was the Ruined King's most powerful frontline soldier. The sword stands out because it was broken in half, but it was reforged by unholy magic. With the shield being reforged by crystallized death. Fun ah. fact, you can find Ledros with his fully 3D modeled weapons in the Ruined King game. So these will be quite why the did, Why did I think about Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> why? How did, how did I just make that connection? To behold in the MMO. Next, there has to be some kind of a legendary weapon crafted by Orn. With one good example already existing in the lore. Remember how in WoW people went on a legendary yes. quest to forge Thunder Fury? Or at least it was epic back in the day? Yes. I really want to see us do the same, but yes. with Orn forging the weapon. Yeah. In fact, he kinda already did it once. In the lore, Orn forged himself some tools. A spade, mm. a hammer and a fork. Later, after a, fork. a battle with his brother Volibear, he threw all the tools besides the hammer away. According to a legend, the fork landed in the oceans somewhere in the east, where a murking picked it up and he used this mighty trident to rule the oceans. Ah. That's how legendary Orn's weapons are. He literally made himself a fork, which was so powerful mortals could use it to rule the world. And who knows, maybe we will be able to find this very fork in the game. So please, Riot, cool. we need a one trident. of Orn's weapons. And here is where we can also mention the Voodoo Blades. I don't think there is going to be a legendary quest behind these or anything like that. I believe by one way or another we will be able to get a Voodoo Blade and it will just have some flavor text. But I still wanted to give you a context behind these weapons. Uh -huh. You see, the greatest bladesmiths around the world have a way to enhance their work. They would forge a blade write a poem and they would bring it to Doran in Ionia. Master ah, Doran would then Doran. take these blades and the poems and he would plant them in a hidden place known as Mistfall. After planting them down, he would wait for an entire year. During this time, the local spirits would bless the blades and greatly mm. increase their power. This is how the great Vuju blades are forged. And I believe one of these blades with this unique history will be found <laughs> in the game. And lastly, before we get into the big ones, there is an idea I had, which I really hope Riot is going to steal. To upgrade your weapons and write them, you just have to wait a year and write a poem. 
You see, one of the big bad guys we are gonna fight is going to be Sion, a legendary warrior of Noxus who was brought back to fight again using blood magic. The cool thing about him is his metal jaw. The jaw is actually the crown of King Jarvan II, whom Sion oh. had killed. So when we get to fight Sion, I would love it if he dropped the crown of King Jarvan ah. II and we could wear it as an actual helm. That would be such a cool touch to Sion's loot. Now, before we get to the top three pieces of loot I want to show you, there is something else I want to show you. Something which you won't be able to find anywhere on the internet. And I know it because I was looking for it. And I couldn't find it anywhere. So... I did it myself. I went to The Ruined King, which is a game now available on Steam, which depicts a story that actually happened in the universe Hashtag of Riot MMO. And I went through the game files and I pulled out all the weapon models. I saw that on Now, Twitter. in this game, you have six party members, each of which is using a totally different weapon. It's kind of like how weapons work in something like Diablo. And because it is an RPG game, the weapons have different models. And here's the kinds of weapons I am going to show you. Yasuo is using swords. Brom is using shields. Ari is using orbs. Misfortune is using pistols. Pike is using daggers. And Ilawi is using idols, which is basically oversized trinkets. Mm. So let's start with the swords. Like a fist shall weapon. We? Feel free to pause at any time to check these out. You can see how a lot of the swords are themed after certain regions. Okay, let's look let's look at these swords real quick. Um on the left side we have like this looks like a bilgewater I don't know pirate sword with a with a like pirates of the Car Caribbean. This looks I I like the basic looking ones. This one's also clean. These are all pretty clean. Obviously, this is in a game where you shouldn't... Usually, you probably wouldn't look at these weapons this closely, so they obviously aren't as graphically, you know, developed, but... Uh, that one is pretty good, too. Uh, I like this one. Like, with the red... This one, the, I like the, like the, how do you say that? The, the color blend, you know? Where it goes from purple to like red, almost to white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one was nice. Mm. This is like a gun blade or something. I don't know how that would work. It almost looks like a gun blade. It even has a trigger. What, how do... How the hell would that work? Even this one is kind of sick. With the teeth? Oh, yeah. But some of them are named swords, which we will probably see in the universe. At the bottom, we can see Hextech Gunblade and yeah. Stormraiser. And in the middle, you oh. can find Mana Moon, Muramana, and Doran's Blade. Next up, we have the shields. Of course, in Ruined King, the shields are carried by Braum. Who is, a is it weird that I think having a lot of very basic gear in the game is really cool? Like just a normal shield? Very big guy carrying a very big shield. So of course all of these are a bit oversized to match him. I also found out that some of them did have recallers. Which to be fair is standard for any RPG game these days. Room? So I included them here too. Anyway here we can point out the shield of the Poro King, Doran's shield, Randuin's omen, and as I mentioned before, even here we got a shield themed after the demigod Orn's orb. Will. Next we have the magical orbs. The game calls this kind of a weapon a, a focus. These are obviously forecasters. And in Ruined King, you can see that a few of them have <laughs> comical... Guys, I've learned magic and now I will show you uh, my prowess in magic and then he throws a bomb at you. <laughs> Or fucking dice or some shit. Theming. For example, you can see a ghastly poro, a poro snack, and even a DD dice. Then we have the guns. I love how even the guns are themed after regions. 
For example, I would have never expected it, but this is what a gun from the Masia would look like. That's what but I we can guess. also see that the game has 3D models for a Void Corrupted pistol too. Ah. Next we have the daggers. From these, I believe only one is a named item which many of you may recognize from League. And that is the Dusk Blade of Darkthar. Oh. The rest may be just random daggers from all around Runeterra, but they do look amazing oh. regardless. Lastly, we have the idols. You can think of these as items that show us what offhand could look like in mm. this universe. But if Riot allows us to or play as weapon. a priest of Buru, then we may straight up use these things as giant hammers to beat evil. Of course, one of these idols is themed after Poros, but I can mention that this one is known as Corin Revek's paperweight, with Corin Revek being Oriana's father, ah. whom people may know from League of Legends. Mm. But that's really it for the lootable items from the RPG game Ruined King. Given the fact that Riot recently revealed a new champion with unique weapons, I also wanted to very quickly mention two unique weapon types of this universe. The newest champion in League is using Natofos, which are giant hammers which you can wield as a hybrid between a shield and a fist weapon. But also, the elemental mages of Ishtal might also wield a weapon known as the Omladl, which is essentially a really sharp hula hoop that channels magic. What were these Last called usually? I what, the Chakram, no? Isn't it usually a Chakram? I got to mention one cool thing. In the Ruined King files, I was also able to data mine the armor and the axe of Rasa the Sunderer. But remember that the giant axe is a named item called Night Harvester. Mm. So now let's have a look at the top 3 items from this universe. In my opinion, among the top 3, we absolutely have to mention the Darkin weapons, which are the foundation of iconic weapons in this universe. Remember how after the Ascended slowly turned mad and they slowly turned into the Darkin? They got out of control after they started using blood magic to enhance their own bodies? Well, after the Darkin started fighting each other for dominance and they slowly started destroying the entire planet, the Celestial Aspects realized that they should probably do something about it. And so, the Aspect of Twilight infused a weapon with its power and used it to consume the souls of the Darkin this weapon became known as the Chalikar. Now, ah, the Chalikar is weapon. a giant crossblade that was originally wielded by an Ascended Warrior, and which is now being held by an important character, so we will never see the Chalikar in our hands. However, Maybe. the aspect of Twilight gave the Chalikar to humans, so that humans could craft new weapons in its image. And these new weapons would be able to capture the remaining Darkin who are running around the world. I gotta sneeze real so, quick. So, that's what humans did. They forged celestial weapons yeah. that absorbed the Darkin. The issue with this is that, after being absorbed, the Darkin live inside the weapons. And should any mortal try to hold those weapons, the Darkin could dominate they, their they mind, knew. take over their bodies and essentially I still essentially think we will probably themselves. have one of these. Now, thank in thank my thank mind, there are only two ways how Riot can allow the players to hold a Darkin weapon. Either we find a Darkin that is so weak that even after we hold them, they can just whisper to us, but it can't really start taking over mm. our body. Maybe just give it a bit of cosmetic corruption on our body. Or we would simply go on a legendary quest to cleanse the weapon of or the Darkin. Or you have, in, have the Darkin now and you will have Darkin abilities and... You can control the Darkin as well. I don't know. I know all of this sounds like a nerdy talk. So let me show you some examples of the yeah. already existing Darkin weapons from Legends of Runeterra. We have I the Darkin Harpoon. I think you can Harpoon. twist the lore around these a lot, right? You can just say, oh yeah, this one works this way. You could also like enhance the lore in a lot of ways, right? So maybe you can just wield some of these. Which imprisoned the Darkin known as Ibaros. The Darkin shield containing the Darkin Joral. The Darkin Lodestone, which I assume is some kind of a trinket which contains Horazi. The mm. Darkin Ballista that imprisoned Naganeka. Fun fact, Naganeka so probably weird. looks a bit like chicken because in theory it is possible that one of those chickens touched the Ballista. And so Naganeka took over the body of the chicken. Then we have the Darkin Harp, uh, which holds the really creepy maddening Darkin Styradu. Of course, there is also the legendary Scythe of Rust, 
which is currently being held by Kane, who is successfully resisting Rust. There is yeah, also like, like the Kane. Dark in Bow of Varus, the Dark in Blood Letters, which belong to the one who came up with the idea of using blood magic, Zolani. And lastly, we also have the Dark in Halbert that contains Tarosh. We also know that later this year, Legends of Runeterra will reveal even more Darkin. We are still wow. waiting for more information on Aatrox, and I can't wait to learn what the heck that Darkin cool monstrosity if you could transform is. A little. Is that a Darkin that took over the body of a Voidborn? What the because hell is that? that sounds badass. But anyway, I really like the shield, and I will probably play a tank just to get it. Anyway, on to number two on this list. When talking about legendary weapons, we have to mention Nightfall. We ah, talked about this one a little bit when we talked about the bosses and villains mm. of this universe. Many of you may know that Mordekaiser has the ability to forge souls into just about anything. Be it bricks that would build his kingdom in his own realm, or weapons. Yeah. When Mordekaiser was summoned into the realm of the living, instead of being thankful to the cultists who summoned him, he ripped out their souls and forged them into his brutal mace, which he called Nightfall. This is the giant hammer that Mordekaiser is carrying on his shoulder. And with Mordekaiser inevitably being a boss, which we absolutely have to deal with at some point in the future. Really, it's all his lore is about. After we get to fight him, he has to drop Nightfall. Yeah. This weapon doesn't really have any important like frost lore, board. so you are not screwing anything up by giving it to the players. It is simply a badass weapon worthy of a legendary drop. I mean, at this point, after his entire story, uh, this I feel like legendary drops have not been legendary drops since like 2005, so I don't know how they will make drops feel legendary again. The weapon no idea. has the kill count of hundreds of thousands. But even that weapon is not number one. Just as Viego is the Arthas Menethil of this universe, so his legendary blade is the Frostmourne of this universe. But I'm afraid this blade is so legendary, Riot will probably not give it to us. So let's talk about the Blade of the Ruined do so much with the dark and stuff. What originally started as a simple item which you would buy in the in-game shop in League of Legends, was eventually turned into the most legendary blade of the League of Legends universe. I mean, it's so legendary that you can buy it in Valorant. This blade, I mean... which used to be simply called the Blade of the King, has a name. It is called Sanctity, for when this Sanctity. blade appears, people of Camelvor know they are safe. It has two very unique abilities. Sanctity is all, always is stored weird. in its sanctum inside Camelvor's capital but its wielder can instantly summon it anywhere across the world. Oh. That's what you can see Viego do in the cinematics. He That's is cool. not conjuring it out of thin air. He is simply summoning it. Its second ability is what gives the blade its power. And it's what gives the blade a second name. You see, the blade of the king is passed down between the kings of Camavor. The current wielder is Viego, to whom it was passed down by the Lion of Camavor himself. But every time the blade is passed to a new uh -huh. owner, the blade takes a piece of the would-be king's soul. Then uh -huh. it either kills them on the spot, or the blade deems them worthy and they are allowed to rule Camavor. Passing this test is not easy and the blade claimed countless kings before. That's why Sanctity also carries a second name, the Soul Render. Oh. Of course, because it is being passed down for generations, the Blade is currently holding pieces of the souls of all the previous kings. At least, that's what we believe is the case. What we do know for sure is that when Viego died, he was stabbed by his own sword, which is the Blade that contains a piece of his own soul. So because his own Blade couldn't claim him, that's one of the many reasons why Viego's death caused a massive explosion of undeath. It is the blade oh. that is responsible for There's creating a malfunction. the Shadow Isles. And it is the blade that is going to claim us once we inevitably get to fight Viego in the MMO. Of course, you know we have to face Viego. Because you're not one of the people who skipped over the last video and you it's have basically all the context, right? 
And of course, it's going to be up to Riot whether they decide whether they want to give us the blade or not. Unlike Nightfall, Sanctity is very important for the lore. The souls inside the blade could push the story forward, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Viego's own soul in the blade was the key to destroying him. But that's an issue for future Riot to figure out. Anyway, that is it for this video, and that's There's gonna be one. it for MMO videos for There's a while. So much you Many can people do with ask this me if I feel like I'm oversaturating the MMO videos, and I'd like to say, no. So far, I, 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 I like his take here. Okay, like an MMO has to be grand and fantastical and fucking over-exaggerated and there's everything in the world. Like, that's, that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Or I am only showing people what actually exists a good in thing. the universe. Nothing more, nothing less. But from this point on, if I dive into other topics, I feel like there wouldn't be enough content. And I would have to start going into heavy hypotheticals. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what I want to do. I want to show people the beauty of Riot's universe. And I want to show people that League's lore is really good. And it's been really good for about 7 years now. So, because this is going to be my last MMO video for a while. Uh. In a classic Riot style, I want to leave you with a montage. A supercut of some of the amazing places which we know exist oh. in this universe. It is going to be nothing but official art from this universe. And should the day come, and should we see the MMO come to fruition in like 8 years, yeah. these are gonna be the places I'll go out and look for. So thank you for watching, thank you for reacting, and I'll see you... No problem, man. ...in a decade. Yeah, I think so too, man. I think so too. That's all cool. Oh, I like I like that guy's face with the different ghosts. I don't like the tech stuff. That one is cool. There you go. That's also a cool mount. Indrid is always gonna be badass. Orn, of course. That was a good video. That was a go good fucking video. Here you go, chat. Watch it. Le like it. Give the man a sub. Dude, I'm gonna give him a sub. I don't care about League lore that much, but I mean, it will eventually be MMO lore, so then I will care about it, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty good. That was a goddamn good video.